Hello, welcome back. Alright. Gonna quickly explain some things. For anyone that was totally confused in the last tutorial about how to build this, you literally drag your buttons in. So you, you click on button, drag that in. You make that the size you want. You drag the image onto the button, and then you select thumbnail... Thumbnail blank. Um, and then you select that to be 100 by 100 and you position it the way you want it to be positioned and you position them all you take all the padding off so there's going to be some padding somewhere i don't even know where that is um there you go padding it's up there so you just set that to zero um so you do all that stuff get that all out of the way it's going to be a really annoying process by the way i, I, I never said it was going to be anything uh, too easy but it, it, well it's not hard it's just it's annoying right you also want to name them all inventory slot 1 and then name the image that you dragged onto the button inventory image 1. So these are buttons, these are images, there are 10 of them in total. They're really annoying to make but you drag them all in, you position them nicely, um, you can fine tune them by changing, um, by changing some things. So if I click on this, uh, you can set the positions and be very accurate with it and make sure it's all perfect and stuff like that. I went through and did that. It took about 15 minutes. It sucked, but <laughs> you're going to have to do it anyway. So, Alright, so you made the HUD. Um, and we made that excellent little class that allows us to um, append the HUD to the screen or whatever. I don't think we actually made it appear on the screen. So to do that, all right, you're going to go ahead and go to your C++ classes, right click on your game mode, create blueprint class to, uh, based on. Now I created a blueprint class based on my game mode and it's in here, right? Um, so now I take that, I, I open that up, and then I select HUD in game for all of these classes. Compile and save, if it crashes just repeat the process and whatever. Um, and then you will be ready. Now you have the, your game mode set up to work with HUD and game. All you have to do now is go file, um, sorry, edit, project settings, you go to maps and modes, and then you select your my Minecraft game mode or blueprint game mode or whatever you decided to call your blueprint game mode. Um, that's kind of the annoying stuff out of the way, but once you have that done, you should have this in your game. You'll be able to scroll through it. Now what I'm going to show you how to add in this video, and it's going to be a long and annoying video, but once we've done this, it should be all out of the way, is you can now pick up stuff and it will appear in your inventory. How nice is that? Very, very nice stuff. And we can pick up this one as well. It all gets added, and um, yeah, one thing that it doesn't do yet is it doesn't let you change your pickaxe depending on what slot you're in, right? So if I pick this one up, um, and I go back to my diamond pickaxe, it just keeps the water one out. So I haven't coded that functionality in yet, but this is kind of just getting that stuff working. Okay. Um, warning. This is for like... <laughs> okay, this is, I'm just going to come right out with it. This is going to suck. Um, it's just not that much fun to do hard coding, but it's kind of like one of those things where... You put in an hour of hard work and you torture yourself, and at the end you breathe out a nice sigh of relief, and then you, we can get back to the fun stuff, right? But um, for now, it kind of sucks. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's get started. Um, so, let's see. The first thing we're going to do is work on the player class. Now, I'm not going to write this all out, because I figure you guys can just copy this, and I really want to get through this tutorial as fast as possible. I don't want to waste your guys' time. Let's get this done nice and fast. So. We made the game mode class that did all the HUD stuff that we wanted to. Um, the one thing that we do need to do is make some slots um, or some functions inside of our character to talk to the HUD. So you want to make these. And these are all um, inventory functions you need to make. So first thing, make this variable, current inventory slot. Make a constant num of inventory slot, set that equal to 10 and make these two functions move up inventory slot and move down inventory slot. And what these will do is just cycle through our inventory slots. It handles all that stuff so that when I scroll up and down with my scroll wheel, um, it is, it's actually reflected in the HUD, right? You see the HUD updating. Um, and so that's kind of what that's for. Let's see. Um, we have this function here. Make sure to copy that nicely. Uh, get thumbnail at inventory slot. 
and add item to inventory and get current inventory slot. Those are all functions that are very important to our, um, our HUD. If we don't have these functions, our HUD will literally be impossible to make. We, we need those functions. Um, those functions are laid out like so. So let's start with this one, get current inventory slot. If I go to the definition, all that does is return that variable we made called the current inventory slot. Add item to inventory um, basically just checks if the item we're trying to add is not null, and then it um, finds a free space in the inventory, adds it, um, otherwise it returns false. Um, the get thumbnail and inventory slot just gets the thumbnail at the inventory slot. They're very simple functions, but you're going to have to write these. These are just little helper functions that will help us when it comes time to uh, make the code. And uh, also, inventory. I don't know if we made inventory, so I'm just going to tell you guys about it anyway. You want to make um, inventory of wieldable pointers. Uh, so make a T array of wieldable pointers, and that's going to be our inventory. Um, okay, and also inside of wieldable, you want to have this um, property here. This is the pickup thumbnail. So when you pick up a, a diamond pickaxe, uh, it has a thumbnail associated with it, uh, which is a thumbnail of a diamond pickaxe, and that's used by our HUD as well. So you want to make that. And then, um, let's see, do we initialize this at all? I don't think we do. I don't think we do anything with the thumbnail. Um, nah, doesn't seem like we do anything with the thumbnail. Okay. You want to add um, add item to inventory. I don't know if we made these functions as well, but they're also very simple functions. So void on picked up, void on used. Um, set skeletal mesh, add the item to the inventory. Just, just copy this stuff, basically. It's really simple stuff to copy. Um, you should have no, no issues copying this in. So right now, uh, if you play, you still shouldn't really have much functionality. If we go to play, you should have just this. You won't be able to scroll up. If you try scrolling, it won't work. Um, and that's for a reason. So the reason that you can't scroll through your inventory slots is because we didn't map the inputs. We didn't map that to work. So what you want to do is go edit, project settings, go to input, and then add inventory up on mouse wheel up and inventory down on mouse wheel down. Come into your character um, and then add these two lines. So when you scroll up, call the move up inventory slot function, and when you scroll down, call the move down inventory slot function, right? Pretty simple stuff. And all those functions do is this. Now, for anyone that isn't really understanding what's going on here, um, we're just saying move up inventory slot, moves up an inventory slot. If we're at the top inventory slot, so inventory slot number nine, then go back to the start. Just like what happens in Minecraft. So um, you can scroll all the way through your slots, and if you try to scroll up, but you're at the last slot, it'll take you back to the start. That's what this line here is saying. Um, move down inventory slot very much just says the same thing. Um, if you're at the start of your inventory and you try to scroll back one, it doesn't scroll to negative one, it scrolls back to the top of the inventory, right? Um, and that's why we can do this in the game, I'll show you. That's why if I'm at the last one and I keep scrolling, it just goes back to the start. Or if, I'm at, if I scroll down, it goes back to the top, right? That's what we're telling it to do, basically. Pretty um, easy stuff. Uh, okay. And I think that's it. I think that's all you guys really need, I want to say. Don't, don't call me out. If there is something I've missed, um, or you guys don't understand something or whatever, do leave a comment, but I don't want to write this out on screen because I want to get through these videos as fast as possible. No one likes doing HUDs, so yeah. Do tell me in the comments below if I've missed anything or if you don't understand anything, anything like that, and I will definitely help you out. Um, okay. This is the blueprint scripting part, so we need to actually script our HUD using blueprints. Um, so yeah, you guys still won't be able to do this because we haven't told our blueprints to call these functions and things like that. It's a little more complicated than that. So, um, let's see here. Um, uh, okay. Open up your HUD. I'm going to save mine and click on this thing here, graph. And this is the scripting stuff. Now you guys won't have any of this. This is the spaghetti of wires that powers our HUD. Sorry about my phone. 
Um, yeah. This is the big spaghetti of HUD that powers um, everything. And it's messy, but I'll show you guys how to write this. The first thing you want to do is just click fu uh, plus function and make a new function called set active inventory uh, button. So you just click function set active inventory button like so. Uh, we've already got one called that so we can't make it obviously, but you want to do that. Um, in your graph, if you go to the event graph, drag out from this event tick here and then type in set active inventory function. So we're saying every tick call that function that we made. And that's all this does. So every tick I'm calling this uh, set active inventory button function. Inside your active inventory button function um, you will have none of this. So this is the long and tedious annoying part that I was telling you guys about. Uh, we have to script our buttons to do stuff. We have to tell our buttons what to do and uh, believe me this is kind of a nuisance but really it's a good idea to get familiar with blueprints anyway because there's kind of some times where you need to use blueprints and I really like scripting the HUDs with blueprints even though they look like this. They look awful. And I'm sure there's a better way to do this by the way guys but this is how I um, went about doing it. So. <laughs> You guys probably watch my, my videos and you're like, oh, he's he's so good at coding, he, he totally knows what he's doing. And then you see this and it just ruins anything you guys thought about me. Um, but this is how I chose to do it, so it's whatever. Um, Alright, let's get started. So, you want to compile all that code that I just told you guys to write, by the way, before we get into this. Because as you can see, we get a reference to our character, and then we call a function like this. Well, we need to compile our code before we can call a function um, that we just wrote. So, compile really quick, and then come back to this. Okay, first thing we're doing, we're getting a reference to the player character. Now, I've already, I could just show you this, but let's just make it a game, because why not? Um, okay, so the first thing you want to do is get the player character, right? That's pretty easy to do. Um, do that. Drag out and then cast it to a Minecraft character. Right click and then go convert to pure cast because we know that the player character is a Minecraft character, right? Um, then drag that up, get the current inventory slot. Get a reference to the canvas panel, and I've called it canvas panel zero, which is a horrible name, but it's not a big deal, I guess. Um, get the child at the current inventory slot. Cast that to a button, because by default we just have a widget reference, um, so we need to cast that into a button. Convert that to a pure cast again, because we know it's a button. Um, drag this out get the child at the index of zero because we know that there's only one child which is the image on top of the button cast that to an image because again it's just a, a widget reference convert that to a pure cast set the color and opacity of it and then to get a color we're just going to go make color set all these to one Set this one to 0 0.5 and drag that into there. Beautiful. That's um, pretty much the top thing all taken care of. That's all you guys will need to do. Later on we're going to drag something from down here up into this little node here. Um, so let's get started on all that stuff. I'm going to try to drag some of this stuff out. All right, we'll drag that up there. This is super dodgy. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just going to remake the function, actually. Let's do that. Now, it's a good idea to always comment your uh, blueprints. Great idea to comment your blueprints. So, type in comment and then add a comment. I'm going to drag a comment over this and say... Um, uh, get... Oh, light up the current selected inventory slot. Okay, so once you've done that, um, pretty easy stuff. Now the, the more tedious part is to set all the other inventory slots to be dim and also to um, 
put the thumbnails into the inventory slots that have items in them and if they don't have items in them then just put the blank thumbnail in there that's a little bit more complicated to do but still not horribly bad it's actually pretty annoying to do but whatever um okay i'm just gonna move this up here so i can copy it really quickly all right um okay so we're gonna add a comment here again it's a great idea to comment your code always do it and especially with blueprints i find because blueprints can get so messy uh so we'll say set all other inventory slots to be dim and apply thumbnails where applicable so if there's an item in that inventory slot then we can set a thumbnail to it and if there isn't an item in that inventory slot, then we can just set a blank inventory slot. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Oh man, I really didn't like writing this part. It sucked. Okay, let's let's just deal with it. Okay, good god. Um, hang on, what's going on here? Oh no, blueprints. Blueprints, what are you doing? Ugh. Guys, I don't know what's happened. Um, no, okay, we'll do it down here. Oh, I just got rid of everything. Okay, in a sec. I'm gonna go back. I'll start recording once I got back to where I was. <laughs> Sorry, I totally messed that up. Alright, what's going on? I'm back. Um, I'm back like three hours later. <laughs> but... When I left you guys, we are done this top one, and we hadn't done this bottom one. And I can't recreate the bottom one, so I'm just going to show you what I did. And you guys can drag these nodes out yourself, do it all. It's very much just a matter of copying what I have here. Um, so you want to get the canvas panel, right click, canvas panel. Go ahead and get it, um, and drag everything out as you see here. Now you may need to pause at some points and really check what I've got. Um, you can see all this. I'll just slowly show you guys everything here. Um, sorry that I can't go through and actually do this, but it would take a long time, and I actually can't create another set active inventory button anyway, so I can make a copy of this. Um, exactly, but this is pretty much it. Just drag this through, do exactly as you see here. Again, feel free to pause the video at any points just to get everything in here. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. In fact, I get the feeling you don't even need this part here. I get the feeling this isn't even required. Could be wrong, though. Uh, I could be wrong. But, um, yeah, it works for me, so there you guys go. Um, that's, that's the inventory setup. That's annoying to make and it's tedious but that's what you have to do um, also for you people that are having issues with um, your thumbnails not appearing right well if you click on your if you go into um, if you go into assets and then go into blueprints go into wieldables and then click on your pickaxes after um, compiling so you have to compile first but uh, there will be this pickup thumbnail property which you will need to set yourself. I'll put the thumbnails for the pickaxes in the description, so go ahead and download those. Um, all you need to do is just set those. And now it will be linked and when you pick them up it will it'll happen. Um, and that's it really. If you guys get any problems, do hit me up in the comment section. I will sort out your problems. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, I'll see you in the next tutorial. We're finally done with HUDs. We can move on, thank god. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.